In this lecture, I'm going to be talking a little bit about limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. So first we want to just um, talk a little bit about or, or, or recall um, this idea of infinite limits. So we've talked about infinite limits before. I don't think we used that term before. But we talked about situations where we had something like the limit as x approaches a of f of x being equal to infinity. For example, this would happen in something like um, the limit as x goes to 0, say, of 1 over x squared is equal to infinity. So this is what we call an infinite limit, where if um, x approaches some number a, as x approaches some number a, the function is getting larger and larger and larger. And we saw that um, if we had one of these infinite type limits, we would have a vertical asymptote. We now want to study um, a problem where instead of approaching a number and having the function grow larger in size, we're going to approach infinity and see what happens to our function. So um, the idea here with limits at infinity is x is becoming larger and larger and larger, and we want to know what the function f of x is getting closer and closer to. So we'll see that if we have the limit as x approaches infinity of our function is equal to some number l, then the horizontal line y equals l will be a horizontal asymptote of our function. So here are some definitions for us. If we have a function that's defined on some interval from a to infinity, okay, it's possible that it's not defined um, away from infinity, but it's defined starting at some value and going up um, all the way to infinity for as large numbers as we can think of, then if um, f of x becomes arbitrarily close, meaning as close as we want to some finite number l for all sufficiently large x, we can say that the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is equal to l and call y equals l a horizontal asymptote of the function. Um, if we have a function that's defined on some interval, say from negative infinity up to some number a, now that it's possible that the function is defined on all real numbers, but this um, these definitions each require the function to at least be defined either for very large positive numbers here or for very large in magnitude um, numbers but on the, the negative end for us to talk about um, this limit down here. So here we're saying that if the function becomes arbitrarily close to some finite number, let's say m, for all sufficiently large x um, that are negative, so we say large in magnitude but negative, we say that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the function is equal to m, and we call y equals m a horizontal asymptote um, of our function. So we want to see how this um, looks in a couple of examples and then start actually computing these limits. So here are some examples where we've got horizontal asymptotes on a graph. So let's call this function f, this function g, and this function h. In this first example, we can see that the limit as x approaches positive infinity of the function is getting closer and closer to this y value of 3. So we'd say the limit as x goes to infinity of f is 3, and we have a horizontal asymptote of the equation y equals 3. We can also see in this picture that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the function is also getting closer and closer to that y value of 3. So this graph only has one horizontal asymptote of y equals 3. We see in this function of g that we have a different kind of behavior going on, but we still have um, a horizontal asymptote that's going to show up. This function is oscillating back and forth, but the oscillations are getting smaller and smaller and smaller so that the limit as x goes to infinity of this function is approaching a y value of 5. So this graph here has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 5. Okay. So in this last example here, which happens to be um, arctan of x, or the inverse tangent, we see that as we approach very large negative values, excuse me, very large positive values and very large negative values, um, we're approaching two different values. So we see here that the limit as x goes to infinity of arctan x is going to, well if we remember what the range of um, arctan is, it's approaching negative pi halves. So I have this horizontal asymptote of y equals, oops, Excuse me, that should be positive pi halves there. 
y equals positive pi halves is one of our horizontal asymptotes. And we see that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of arc tan of x is approaching negative pi halves. So we also have a horizontal asymptote here of y equals negative pi halves. Okay. So it's possible that as we approach infinity and negative infinity, we approach two different values. It's also possible that we might approach the same value. But when we talk about finding horizontal asymptotes for a function, we'd have to consider both what happens as x gets really large up to positive infinity and what happens as x goes to negative infinity. And then we'll always write down um, the equation of the horizontal asymptote as an equation y equals some number. Okay. So besides finding um, horizontal asymptotes from graphs or finding these limits at infinity from a graph, we're also going to be able to or we're going to want to um, compute limits um, algebraically. So we need to have some rules for working with limits at infinity. So let's think about these two examples here. The limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. So think about what's happening here. As x gets larger and larger and larger, I've got something like 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, 1 over a million, my um, output is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it turns out that the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x is 0, which we could also see if I made a graph here of 1 over x. See, as I approach, um, let's see, infinity, I'm getting closer and closer to that x-axis. I also see that if I look at the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x, well, if I divide 1 by a very large negative number, 1 divided by negative a million, 1 divided by uh, negative 10 million, I'm getting a smaller and smaller and smaller number. It's approaching from the other direction, but still, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that limit is equal to 0. Okay. So if we extend this um, idea a little bit here, we can show that powers uh, of 1 over x as x goes to infinity are also approaching 0. So this theorem tells us that if we have r a rational number, so you can think of that as um, something like a half or 2 thirds, or rational numbers also include all the integers, so we can think about all our powers of x, 2, 3, 4, x squared, x cubed. If I want to look at the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the r, that limit is going to be equal to 0. So this is going to be an important fact for us. You can also just think the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the n is 0. Um, in the case of a uh, limit as we approach negative infinity, we have to be a little careful if we're talking about rational numbers. If r greater than 0 is a rational number such that x to the r is defined for all x, meaning that I'm not dealing with, for instance, the square root of x there, because in that case it doesn't make sense to approach negative infinity. But as long as this power of x is defined for all x, then it will be true that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x to the r is equal to 0. So these are two really important facts um, that are going to help us compute limits um, at infinity using algebra and combining with some of the algebraic techniques that we learned before in section 2.3. Okay, so let's take our first example. So we want in this example to find the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2 all over 2x cubed minus 4x plus 5. So the technique that we're going to want to use here is dividing um, every term by the highest power of x that appears in the denominator. Because I want to somehow get things that look like 1 over x to some power. And then use my rule that those um, kinds of things are going to 0 as x goes to infinity. So I'm going to go through and divide every term by x cubed, because that's the highest power of x that appears in the denominator. And then I'm going to have to use some exponent rules to simplify. So I've got the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So I've got 4x cubed over x cubed, that's 4. Okay, So I can cancel those because I'm only interested in what's happening as x is um, going to a very large negative number, so that's not where x could be 0, plus 6 over x minus 2 over x cubed, all over 2 
minus 4 over x squared plus 5 over x cubed. And then I think about using my um, limit laws, which would allow me to say that this limit is equal to the limit of the top divided by the limit of the bottom as long as the bottom is not going to zero. So if I look at this, I've got this limit as x goes to negative infinity of 4 plus 6 over x minus 2 over x cubed all over this limit as x goes to negative infinity of 2 minus 4 x over x squared plus 5 over x cubed. And I see that 6 over x and 2 over x cubed are both going to 0 because those are of this kind of form. If you, you were using the, um, the limit laws really precisely, what we're doing is we're doing the limit of this first term plus the limit of the second term minus the limit of the third term. So the limit of that first term is 4. The limit of the second term, well that would be 6 times the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x. And the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x is 0, so that would be 6 times 0. So I'm just writing this out to, to help us see exactly what we're doing. The limit as x goes to negative infinity of this last term is going to be 2 times the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x cubed. So that would have to be 2 times 0 all over, well the limit of this first term is 2, the limit of the second term is 4 times the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1 over x squared, where 1 over x squared is going to 0, so this would be minus 4 times 0, and then I would end up with, using the same logic, 5 times 0. So this simplifies to 4 halves, or 2. So we see that the limit that we're being um, asked to find here, the limit is x goes to negative infinity of 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2 all over 2x cubed minus 4x plus 5 is equal to 2. Okay, so that means that we have a horizontal asymptote for this particular function of y equals 2. Okay, so this particular question didn't ask us to find that, but we're just connecting that back to horizontal asymptotes.